Now to Georgia. So the district attorney, uh, Fannie Willis, you all know, uh, had an affair with her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, who just happens to be her top prosecutor that she hired for a lot of money. And then Wade and Fani go all over the place on trips. And, and yeah, this looks really bad, really bad. But Fani says, hey, I didn't do anything wrong. Go. I don't feel like my reputation needs to be reclaimed. Let's say it for the record. I'm not embarrassed by anything I've done. So we were still doing the case in the way that it needed to be done. Um, I don't feel like we've been slowed down at all. Um, I do think that there are efforts to slow down this train, but the train is coming. Well, that train was almost derailed and still might be because of all these shenanigans down in uh, Fulton County, Georgia. And joining us is from Atlanta. It's Congressman Barry Loudermilk. He is the chairman of the Sud Committee on Oversight in the House of Representatives. Uh, Mr. Loudermilk is looking into uh, Fani Willis, and uh, we're pleased to have him on the No Spin News this evening. So what, why uh, are the feds involved in looking at Fani at this point, Congressman? Well, Bill, thanks first for having me on. Well, sure. this has been part of a bigger investigation that my subcommittee has been leading at the direction of then Speaker uh, Kevin McCarthy to look into what really happened on January 6th, how was there a security failure, but also the select committee on January 6th. So what led us into Fonnie Willis was uh, during our investigation, we uncovered uh, information that the uh, select committee on January 6th was actively working with Fonnie Willis sharing information during the course of their investigation. Now, this is highly unprecedented. It's not unusual for a uh, House committee or a select committee to turn over a uh, criminal referral to the Department of Justice or someone where at the conclusion of an investigation. But they were working with her during the investigation, sharing information. What's concerning to a lot of people is we have uncovered irrefutable evidence that this committee, the select committee, was suppressing any evidence that didn't line up with their preconceived narrative about Donald Trump organizing and executing the riots on January 6th. Okay, and so let me stop, it, let me stop you there because we want to keep it very, very vivid here, very simple. So Liz Cheney's committee, and you know, we all know about that, and right? I think it's been established they did suppress information, um, yes. anything that was exculpatory, they didn't put you know, they put it at the end and they diminished it. But this is a state beef in Georgia. And when you have a federal uh, entity, the January 6th committee, House of Representatives, cooperating with a state beef, that is highly unusual, is it not? It is. It is. I mean, it's uh, I haven't seen this happen before, but also engaging multiple times, including uh, with Miss Cassidy Hutchinson. If you remember, she's the one who came up with the sensational stories about. Yeah, we uh, debunked her. Having the steering wheel. Right. She was we working did. directly with them as well. She was working with Fonnie Willis, right? Yes. So we, de yes. we debunked Miss Hutchinson. I mean, it was a load of garbage, and she made a lot of money on a book off it, too. Now, there have been reports that Nathan Wade, the boyfriend, uh, the top prosecutor for Miss Willis uh, and her paramour um, visited the White House. Did mm -hmm. you look into that? Do you have anything on that? We are in, in cooperation with Jim Jordan and uh, Jamie Comer, who's uh, chair of the oversight uh, subcommittee. We're looking into that aspect. We have multiple jurisdictional boundaries there, but Jim Jordan and I have uh, teamed up together. He's looking into uh, the visits to the White House uh, while I'm looking into what information was given to Fani, and did she receive any of the exculpatory information that uh, we ended up turning up that you never saw in but public? But it would be very unusual for a state prosecutor, okay, Nathan Wade, to get admittance into the White House, to talk to the White House. That looks like the Biden White House was coordinating, and that would be, talk about impeachable, that would be a huge story if it happened. Did it happen? Do you have evidence that Wade went to the White House and talked to White House people? According to my conversations with Jim Jordan, who's leading that aspect of it, he believes that it did happen. Wow. I don't have the evidence myself, 
But you're right. I mean, that's big. And, and your poll numbers are showing the American people know that this is politically driven. Well, that's and, true. Uh, but yeah. but but if Jordan, that's a, a headline for Jordan, and I, I'd like to have it defined. Now, the trial about the conspiracy, uh, Trump is charged with the special counsel, all right, Smith, that he was involved with trying to overthrow the government on January 6th. I don't believe he's going to be convicted because there is exculpatory evidence all day long. But you have centered in on the valet to the White House. Tell us about that. Well, we started looking early on, trying to uh, look through all the documentation the select committee turned over to us, and we found out that we had a lot of missing documentation. We, we did find uh, some transcribed interviews have been sent to the White House. Now, these were White House employees that had direct access to the president and the vice president on January 6th. Now, some of the uh, crazy tales that we got out of Mrs. Hutchinson included um, the uh, engagements with the valet. The president threw food onto the floor. He was so angry about things, as well as that he agreed that uh, Mike Pence should be hanged and several comments that were supposedly made, according to Ms. Hutchinson. Well, under the valet's testimony, which was the what we released was heavily redacted because these were military personnel that were apolitical and they're just trying to protect the identity and I understand that. But there is enough information in the unredacted portions to show that that wasn't the case. And this is the person who was side by side with President Trump that day who never heard him make these statements that, yes, Mike Pence should be hung or uh, called him some very vulgar names. And so it basically debunked that portion of of uh, of her. And, testimony that, and that was under oath, right? His uh, testimony was under oath, the valet. Exactly. And when you include that with uh, Tony Ornato, who was the deputy chief of uh, of operations uh, at the White House, uh, his missing testimony, which we made public uh, a couple of weeks ago, totally countered the narrative that Trump, President Trump did not order the uh, the the National Guard to be readied, which he did, and he and he he authorized up to ten thousand troops, uh, but also the driver of the SUV. We uh, have his uh, testimony that we'll release sometime soon, where. He actually said none of that in the uh, the grabbing of the steering wheel or choking a secret service yeah, that was agent. A bunch of crap. Well, logistically, yeah. it was impossible. Do you have any information given to your subcommittee that Trump did some stuff he should not have done? The only thing that we've uncovered is here where he was angry. And, you know, you can understand that. I mean, who, who wouldn't be angry in a situation yeah. to where you felt like the uh, the election was stolen from you? But nothing that rose to the level of impeachment or um, even uh, ethical violation or a legal violation. Right. Everything that so, we've uncovered is he followed the law. Yeah, he was upset. He may have said so some things. The, that he when the trial gets underway, you would expect that Trump will be acquitted and Jack Smith will be embarrassed. I, I believe so. If there was, a, it's an honest look at the evidence. There's enough expul, uh, exculpatory yes. evidence we right. have just uh, released recently that there's no way that you could hold him accountable for what happened on January 6, which means we've gone three years now without actually looking at what really happened and the security failure at the Capitol, which the select committee never looked at at all, or at least never reported. Yeah, I'd on. like to know about Nancy Pelosi's role. Now, you have been attacked, and you well know you have been attacked for doing all of this in defense of Donald Trump. One of the charges were you were in the Capitol on January 5th, the day before the riot, doing something there, wandering around. Do you want to address that? Yeah, this was one of the most ridiculous things that ever happened. Uh, what they claimed is that I gave a tour of the Capitol on January 5th to some of the insurrectionists, a reconnaissance tour. Far from the truth, even the Capitol Police exonerated us in that, but that didn't stop the select right, committee. So it's just total BS. It's story. Who, who is the? Where did that story come from? That came from Liz Cheney, from what we've All uncovered right. in our uh, in, in our investigation. It was some people that visited my office and stayed in the Capitol office buildings the whole time, never got into the Capitol, and they weren't even in the Capitol on January 6th. Most of them just stayed down by the Ellipse and in the mall and then got on their bus and went back home to Georgia. None of them were in the Capitol. None of I them believe were you. Ever. 
I, I, I just need to get everything on the record. The final thing is there is this gallows thing. <laughs> you know, I got to get this stuff. So <laughs> yes. apparently somebody built the gallows. Uh, tell, what is this now? Yeah, and it's true. Uh, about six o'clock in the morning on January 6th, about five people show up. It's still under the cloak of darkness and they literally build a gallows. And uh, supposedly this gallows that the left claims was to hang Mike Pence when he doesn't do what Trump wanted him to do. Well, the interesting thing about that is Mike Pence never told anybody whether or not he was going to stop the certification until in the afternoon. And the gallows were set up at six o'clock in the morning. My question is, how did these stay up all day long yeah. and into the evening? How did they get built in the first place? Don't they have people right. outside? I mean, to get... Ma, all right. If you so there's a lot of... There's a, are you guys investigating the security breakdown in the Capitol? Is that one of your purviews? It is. Yeah, by, that is something we've really uh, taken a hard look at. Good. We've uncovered that there was intelligence failures. Intelligence was, was given to the Capitol Police Intelligence Division of the pending uh, attack, but that intelligence was suppressed. It never got passed along to the chief of police. Right. That really hindered a lot of uh, the preparedness being ready. Um, and we also have a lot of political influence on the Capitol Police. We have had testimony, and I'm working to get verification on it, that the Secret Service offered fencing to Nancy Pelosi to be put up prior to January 6th based on the intelligence they had. She turned it down because she didn't like the optics. The irony is, on the evening of January 6th, she really liked the optics of having a, a security fence around the Capitol with razor wire and National Guard around for months. So, you know, she didn't want to prepare, but she really liked the idea of the optics being yeah. up to show. I think Pelosi, I think Pelosi's got some deficit. Are you going to testify in the trial? Um, by the way, you think you're going to be called by uh, Trump's um, defense lawyers? Uh, I don't know. They've uh, the only thing that we have uh, received in the past was uh, they wanted to subpoena for some of the documents we I had, but the judge okay. dropped the All subpoena. Right. But they they have full access to whatever whatever we have. We're making it public. Really appreciate it, Congressman. If you get anything else, you know we're always interested in this story. It's a huge story for the American people, and we thank you very much for your time today. Thank All you right. anytime. Okay. Sorting through your expense tracking, estimated payments, and all those tax deductions can be overwhelming. It might even lead to a failure to file and failure to pay penalties that pile up on your tax debt. The attorneys at Tax Network USA have been lifesavers for many. Their team has successfully saved clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you're in the hole for $10,000 or starting at a $10 million debt, they are ready to help you. The expert attorneys and tax professionals at Tax Network USA are equipped to secure the best settlement for you and help you resolve all tax cases. So please go to TNUSA.com slash bill, or you can call 1-800-245-6000. These tax debt relief programs are expected to change, so get to them now. Visit TNUSA.com slash bill or call 800-245-6000. Tell them O'Reilly sent you. RFK Jr. announces vice presidential selection. Woman named Nicole Shanahan, 38 years old, uh, one of the wealthiest women in the country because she was Married at one time to the co-founder of Google um, and got a lot of money in the separation. Uh, she describes herself as a left-wing progressive, and that's perfect for RFK. Roll the tape. The Fed works for Wall Street and allows millionaire bankers to prey upon, upon Main Street and the American worker. And that's why Nicole and I both left the Democratic Party. Our values didn't change, but the Democratic Party did. Okay, so RFK is running to the left of the Democratic Party, which is his right to do if you want to. He has one sliver connection to the right in America, and that's the anti-vax stuff. There are conservatives who uh, don't like vaccinations and all of that. 
Okay, so uh, how many states do you think RFK Jr. is on the ballot right now? How many do you think? The number is four. New Hampshire, Nevada, Utah, and Hawaii. Now, Nevada is a swing state. Utah will go for Trump. Hawaii will go for Biden. New Hampshire doesn't like Trump very much, but it's in play. Now, in order to get on the other 46 state ballots, RFK Jr. had to appoint a vice president. That's one of the criteria. In each state is different. So you, this costs an enormous amount of money, and I'm sure Ms. Shanahan is going to be kicking a lot of money into RFK's campaign. You've got to go through the procedures in each state to get on the ballot, and each state is different. So only four have taken RFK now. I don't know how many he's going to get on. And the Democrats can try to block that because according to all the polls, RFK is taking more votes away from Biden than he is from Trump. It's about two, three to one. The Democrats don't want him at all. In fact, RFK Jr.'s own family doesn't want him. Go. When you say you see your brother's campaign as a danger, is it more about siphoning votes away from Joe Biden or is it because of his policies? It's really about siphoning votes from Biden. You know, the, the polls I'm seeing, um, Bobby takes 70 percent of the votes from Biden and 30 percent from Trump. And I feel strongly that this is the most important election of our lifetime. OK, um, now we go to Fairfax County, Virginia, just south of the District of Columbia. So on Easter Sunday, the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, there are nine of them, uh, 10 of them, nine Democrats, one Republicans, have unanimous, unanimously voted to celebrate Transgender Day of Visibility on Easter Sunday. Now, the excuse is, well, March 31st is Transgender Day of Visibility all over the world, so we have, no. You can do it Monday or Saturday. This is right in your face, right in your face to all Christians. That's what this is. Fairfax County, Virginia. Church attendance, according to uh, Gallup poll, on the decline still. Um, they uh, surveyed 32,445 adults. That's a lot of survey. And then a question. Um, these are people who attend religious services weekly. Okay. 2013, 38% for all U.S. adults. 2023, 10 years later, 30%. Christians, that's Protestants. 213, 49, 223, 44. Catholics, 213, 40, 223, 33%. So you can see that weekly attendance at church, sinking, sinking, sinking. Okay. Smart life. Is being religious, believing in God, a positive for your life? There is a study out of Great Britain, the Institute for the Impact of Faith in Life. Now, this is a pro-religious group. You should know that. Here's what they found out. 76% of religiously affiliated people say they were happy. 52% of atheists say they are happy. Big goal. So you're happier if you believe in religion, according to this study. 76% of the religiously affiliated felt confident in dealing with life's challenges. 56% of atheists. 74% of religious people say they have a high degree of self-control. 51% of atheists do. And finally, 42% of atheists were optimistic about the future um, 69% of religious people are optimistic about the future. Maybe that's because of heaven, right? Going to heaven. So, you know, look, if you are a religious person, religious gives solace because you believe that there is justice in the universe and good people will be rewarded and bad people will be punished. And psychologically, that is a very strong emotional quotient. Okay, that. You want to break it down. It is not too late to make the right choice. 
If you're distancing yourself from companies supporting the radical left, please choose AMAX Medicare Advisory Service. Whether it's prescription drug coverage, plan changes, exploring Medicare options, AMAC provides top-notch guidance from their experienced staff. Upholding pro-America values, AMAC has been helping people navigate Medicare for years. Their services are not only free of charge, but also free from any leftist agenda or corporate influence. AMAC stands as the conservative alternative to the AARP, earning its position as the number one group for freedom-loving individuals. So make the right choice for your health and values with AMAC. Choices do matter, and the choice is yours. Choose Medicare the right way with AMAC's Medicare Advisory Service. You can call them at 888-355-5605 during normal business hours, 888-355-5605, or online at amac.us forward slash trust. That's amac.us forward slash T-R-U-S-T, amac.us forward slash trust. By now you have heard me talk about Delta Rescue. They are a fantastic organization that helps rescue animals from the wilderness. You know I'm a dog lover, so is Leo Grillo, the founder of Delta Rescue. It is his life's mission to provide everlasting care for these once abandoned animals. I myself have donated to Delta Rescue. Do you believe it is part of man's duty to care for dogs and horses, the animals that so much of our history is tied to? If so, please consider making a donation or consult your advisor about leaving a gift in your will or trust. There can be some tax advantages, and it's a great way to help Delta Rescue accomplish their mission. So please visit DeltaRescue.org to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. All right, so as uh, you probably have heard, ISIS-K attacked Moscow, 137 at least dead, three kids, uh, older people. Uh, There's a concert hall. Uh, these ISIS people went in, set a fire, gunned down all these people. 20 minutes before Russian security could get on them, um, more than a dozen have been uh, arrested. Now there's all kinds of conspiracy theories floating around. You know, I don't do that. Um, but I will tell you that Putin is trying to blame Ukraine for this. So keeping an eye on that aspect of the story. But the most important part of this story in Moscow, the ISIS murders, is ISIS-K. They're in Afghanistan. And we told you when Biden surrendered to the Taliban, which is what he did, all right, that Al-Qaeda and ISIS were both going to reconstitute under the Taliban in that area, and they have. And they're a threat to the world. Pope Francis skipped his Palm Sunday homily, uh, 87 years old. I think he's very ill. 60,000 people showed up for Palm Sunday Mass, but he couldn't give this remark. So I'm just tipping you off about that. I don't know how much longer the Pope is going to be uh, with us. California, highest unemployment rate in the country, 5.3%. 67% of California counties have lost population. It is a debacle in the nation's largest state. This spells doom for its governor, Gavin Newsom. You cannot run a state that has the highest level of unemployment and expect to be president. So that's the importance of this story. Smart life. So as you know, we have a concierge program on BillOReilly.com, and I get letters every single day of people who have problems or they want more information about something or they want to say hello. they got a private line to me. A lot of the problems that we are seeing with concierge members are because they buy insurance policies and other very important things on the Internet. Travel insurance, for example. They're buying cars, warranties for cars on the internet. That is insane. With all due respect, I know people don't understand the big picture. That's why I'm here. You cannot buy these things on the internet because the only recourse you have as an American citizen, when things go wrong, 
insurance doesn't pay off, warranty won't show up, whatever it may be, is to sue them. The best way to sue them is in small claims court where it doesn't cost you any money, but it costs them money. You do that in your own county. Each county has a small claims court. You go in, you file against, but you can only do that if the business is in your area. If it's on the internet, you can't because they don't even know where these people are. They could be in India. And the, some people are doing big things like wills, like property transfers on the internet. You are insane to do that. If you get hosed in this life, you can sue and try to recover in two ways. A formal lawsuit where you hire an attorney or small claims court where you take care of it yourself as the amount is lower. But once you buy something on the internet, you're done. They can't find them. There's so much crime, so much uh, grifting going on on the internet, and people are still sending money to these people. You give your credit card to these people? <laughs> anyway, that's smart life. Don't do that. Deal with a real person close to your area that you can hold accountable. Smart life. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.